In the analysis of internal flows, major losses are internal losses connected to straight pipes. But what if our geometry is not straight? How can we estimate the head losses? These kind of flows are more complex and require a different approach to analyze them. For common components of everyday use in piping systems, a simple approach based on empirical formulations can be used. The head losses for non-straight pipes are generally referred as minor losses. All the components that are categorized under the minor losses can be grouped into different categories. The pipe features, such as entrance and exit geometries, as well as cross-sectional area changes. The restrictions, that are flow nozzles, orifice plates, screens, grids and louvers. The fluid system components, such as elbows, tees, branches, valves, and similar components. The flow through all these different components can become very complex. However, we can estimate the pressure drop through the component in a similar way as done for the straight pipe flow. What we can do is to set specific inlet and outlet locations for the component and correlate the pressure drop to the Reynolds number and the geometric features of the component. In this way, each part is treated like a black box in a 1D system model. Once we have the experimental or numerical data to build the empirical relations, we can quickly estimate the pressure drop based on the geometry of the component. The 1D model allows us to analyze a system of different connected components and estimate the overall pressure drop given by a combination of these parts. Simply taking into account the pressure drop that each component will add to the system. This is the essence of the 1D system model. This model is really similar to the one used to analyze an electrical network, where the pipes are the electrical wires and the losses can be represented as resistors and the pressure and fluid flow rate are the equivalent of voltage and electrical current flow. For minor losses we can use a model based on a K factor or loss coefficient. So if we analyze for example a pipe entrance where the fluid is disturbed as it enters into the pipe, we can see that this creates a pressure variation in the fluid and also generates minor losses. If we analyze the pressure at different locations, A, B and C, we can see that the pressure in point A drops as we reach point B. This is because the fluid accelerates as it enters the pipe. Then the fluid slows back down as we reach location C, to the velocity it will maintain along the rest of the pipe. The deceleration will create a pressure rise in the flow. What we see here in the graph is the ideal condition where the flow will slow down without any loss. In reality, the actual operating condition will be a lower pressure at location C. This is caused by the pressure losses that can be estimated as a percentage of the kinetic energy. The pressure variation and the head loss equation can be expressed in this form, where KL 
is the loss coefficient or k factor that is a function of geometry and Reynolds number. The loss coefficient gives us an estimate of how far we are from the ideal conditions due to viscous losses. Now, let's analyze different components that generate minor losses. In particular, we are going to analyze the key factor for entrances, sudden contractions and expansions, pipe bands and other miscellaneous pipe components. For each component, we need to estimate the pressure drop based on the kinetic energy, so we need to properly choose the reference velocity to compute the minor losses. In the next examples, the red arrow with a red V will indicate the location where the reference velocity should be estimated for the component analyzed. First, we start with the entrance losses. Reservoirs are commonly attached to pipes to let the fluid flow through its final destination point. As the flow moves from the tank or reservoir to the connected pipe, it accelerates through the pipe and it adjusts to the pipe shape. When the entrance region presents sharp corners, flow separation will likely to occur because the flow momentum will not let the flow perform such a sharp turn. Reported here is a section of the numerical results for an entrance region overlaid on our sketch. The colors represent the velocity magnitude, where the blue is the lowest value and the red is the highest one. You can see that the flow accelerates and the color moves from blue to red. The flow is accelerating as it enters the pipe and then later it starts decelerating, reaching its final velocity. The darker blue region near the corner represents the region where we have flow separation. There, a little bubble of fluid is just recirculating and not moving downstream. This minor loss can be reduced if we smooth out the corners. In this case, we can see that the fluid will present smoother streamlines and it will enter the pipe without generating any flow separation, reducing the pressure loss. The loss coefficient for entrance region can be related to the diameter of the pipe and the radius of curvature. The larger the radius of curvature, the lower the loss coefficient will be. Similar to the entrance region is the sudden contraction in pipes and channels. We often encounter this component when larger pipes are connected to smaller pipes. The contraction works in a similar way as the entrance region where we can have separated flow. The flow initially accelerates and then decelerates in the smaller pipe. The loss coefficient is related to the ratio of the cross-sectional areas of the two pipes. The closer are the areas, the smaller the loss coefficient will be. Now, if we swap the order of the larger pipe and the smaller pipe, we obtain a sudden expansion. For sudden expansions, we can perform a simple analysis to obtain and derive an expression for the loss coefficient using the simple conservation equations. As the flow exits, the smaller pipe forms a jet structure and on its sides the flow will be recirculating. Then the jet spreads up to cover the entire section of the larger pipe. Now, let's see how we can analyze this component. We first define a control volume that is bounded by location 2 and 3 and the side walls of the larger pipe. The velocity of the fluid entering the control volume is V1, while the fluid exits the domain at velocity V3. Also, 
we assume that the pressure along location 2 is constant. We can then apply the continuity, the momentum and the energy equation to the control volume and have these simple formulations. Combining these three equations and solving for the head loss, we can obtain the simple relation for the loss coefficient. There is a direct relation connected to the ratio of the two cross-sectional areas. Here, we can look at the streamlines of the numerical results overlap on the bottom half of the schematics. And we can see that the flow initially maintains its velocity and then it slowly opens up, reaching the larger pipe walls. A component that is largely used in pipe fittings is the bend. Bends allow the flow to change the direction and avoid obstacles. However, they add additional head losses compared to simple straight pipes due to different phenomena. Looking at a set of streamlines to the bend, you can see that the flow separates from the most internal side. This because there, the curvature radius is the smallest for the geometry. The flow separation then causes additional effects. The secondary flow describes a motion of the fluid on the plane normal to the primary flow direction. The primary and secondary motions happen simultaneously as the flow passes through the band. The plot shown here reports the trend of the friction factor as a function of the curvature radius and the pipe diameter. The curves represent the behavior of different pipes having different surface roughness. The chart shows that relatively large values of curvature radio can reduce the friction factor. However, this can be limited by the effective space available in confined spaces. Other common components that can be found in pipe networks are 180 degrees elbows to turn backward the flow, T-junctions to split or mix flow streams, and valves to regulate and control the flow rate through the pipes. Here in this table, are reported different common components and their relative friction factor.